I've heard fra ra 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 enough times and decking them halls and we ain't even got into December yet. So the world can't wait to Christmas. But they ain't worried about Christ. And when he comes, they're more concerned about Christmas this and Christmas that. And they don't forget the, the whole, what's that word, the, the root word of Christmas is Christ. And they seem to not know who he is, but they can tell you who Christmas is. Christmas Noel, Santa, his cousin, Rank Rudolph, all them others, Dan and Vixen, Clips on, whatever their names is. Everybody knows everybody, but they don't know who Jesus is. But I always like Christmas because that's the time you get more days off for being paid. Yeah, you're talking Okay, somebody know what I'm talking about. Nothing else. You know that some days you're going to get paid. It's not like Memorial Day. We might get it. Ain't like Martin Luther King Day. You might get it. You might fourth of July to fall on the wrong day. You won't get it. But Christmas, you'll get the day up, the day before, or the day after. If everything works out right, you get them all. But one thing I do like about Christmas, I'm going to tell you about a conversation I had a couple of years ago. And I was, my favorite movie is The Christmas Story. It's that one show that comes on and stays on 24 hours. The little boy, you'll shoot your eye out. Remember him? Okay, there's a part of the movie where the, the dogs came in, they took off with the turkey, and the man started doing what it is, he's upset, so they have to go to a Chinese restaurant. And they get to the Chinese restaurant, and the people begin to sing the song, Dead the Hogs. And they mess that song up. It's Dead the Hogs with uh, Harvard Rari. Rah, 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 rah. Now, now, look, that for a matter of fact, you can put me at any part of the movie, and I can tell you what's next. But the thing is, I remember talking it over with somebody. I was at a church function, and we were talking about it. It was after worship or something. And I was talking to this Christian. We were talking about how I loved the movie and um, how everything was good. And the person that was, I was talking to said, well, you know, Jesus is the reason for the season. I was like, okay, I got you. But as I was talking to this person, the, I'm going to call him what it was. The preacher was on the outskirts. Um, and he kind of stepped in and said, no, sir, uh, that's not true. Jesus is not the reason for the season. And then he goes on and talks about the December 21st is not his birthday. And I was like, okay. Then he talks about it was meant a pagan holiday that was celebrated by pagans and the Romans. I agree with that, too. And then he goes on and starts telling me about um, what the name of the season or whatever it was. It was like, okay, I learned that in school. Um, but you know my personality, right? So you know I was bewildered as to why or did I have this look on my face that gave the indication that I asked for your opinion? Did I give this look as if I called your name to jump into this conversation? Did I give it a sign that said, I value your opinion. Feel free to come from way over there to come into this conversation and Give your opinion. Now, the key for making a scene, I, I, you know I have said, you know I ain't always been a Christian. This was in my early years of preaching. I, I still was smart enough not to make a scene because I wasn't I wasn't clap, because I showed out if I was there. But I was in a different congregation with the afternoon service. So the key for making a scene, the key for making an argument, that some would say the key from having a coming to Jesus meeting. I said, you know what? I agree with you. I agree that there's a Roman holiday that was uh, added on by the Catholics for the sole purpose of trying to convince them that here yeah, you're doing this and here yeah, you're doing that, but they're going to try to tell them about who Jesus is by using this particular holiday. Now, by my calculations, um, nowhere was it Jesus' birth. We had to do that in school, so you find out there's nowhere it was his birthday. As a matter of fact, um, scholars have put down Jesus' birthday, so we can get this out of the way. March 28th, uh, November the 18th, and September the 11th. Those are the days that they figured Jesus' birthday would have been. Something to do with the cold, the sheep, and who was outside, who wasn't outside. All the point is, we know, and everybody in here has a pretty good idea that the 25th, the 25th of December is not Jesus' birthday, right? Now, that being said, I had to let them know I'm not condoning nor am I condemning anyone who wants to observe Jesus' birthday. Right.
Because regardless of when his birthday is, I didn't see anything inherently wrong with celebrating his birthday. So I asked him, I said, now, have you ever birthday that ever happened on a Tuesday or Wednesday? Yeah. But y'all kicked it on the Saturday or the following Friday? Yeah. So that makes you wrong then, right? It, I know it took him a few minutes to catch up with it, but it, it, it hit him. He's like, well, no, it ain't the same thing. Well, no. If you didn't celebrate your birthday on the exact date, don't that make you a hypocrite? <laughs> and you know by this time, everybody will gather around now because now I'm, I'm smiling because I'm thinking, okay, <laughs> Um, he has no idea that if I'm continuing to engage you in such dialogue, I'm setting you up. Alley Oop is coming, and I'm going to dunk it like uh, Irving would have gave it to Michael Cooper with the long sock. I'm going to bring it down. <laughs> so he continued on to keep talking, and everyone was like, Well, do you not realize every Sunday we actually celebrate his birthday? Yes. Mm -hmm. But no, I said, Hold on. Answer my question. And I'm sure you already know this. If there is a resurrection that Jesus came for, and Jesus died for us, there cannot be a death unless there's a what? A birth. You can't have a death unless there is a birth. So, honestly, we recognize his death, his burial, and his resurrection. But we have to remember, he was born a certain way. The prophet said it had to be a virgin birth. So sometimes we have to understand that the birth is significant. So I just want to let him know, I understand what you're saying, but I don't remember asking you for your opinion. So then he got ignorant, which is what we used to do. But he talked about, I'm going to hell, and I'm everybody I'm talking to, and the person I'm talking to, I'm sending them to hell because I'm telling them, there's nothing wrong with observing Christmas. Yeah, I said, I guess, well, and you know me, I'm like, well, so you telling me, to yeah, brother, you going to hell. I said, well, do me a favor. Save your seat. I'll see you when I get there. <laughs> that used to be my favorite line. So in other words, and it took him a moment to catch what I said, because I was letting him know if I'm the woman, I'll see you when I get there. If I had to do the rest of the words of that song, i will sing the rest of that too. But we have to understand, we have to be mindful of how we talk to folks about a holiday that's just a holiday. Yeah. If we understand that the world celebrates Christmas, is it not the one time that somebody's going to remember who Jesus is? Yeah. They ain't going to remember him on Easter because no Easter's about the money. But this is the one time that they have to know and remind of who Jesus really is. Even when they use, uh, let's say, Santa Claus' name is Christopher something, they still use the word Christ. Kringle. Christ is still in the center of it. So every time they try to get away from it, they still throw Christ in the center of it. So all I'm saying is, this is an opportunity to let people know who Jesus is. Just like any other situation. So me being me, merging my personality, I had to kind of set him up. And I mean, I knew I was wrong, but I knew I was setting him up. I'm talking about one of those Humpty Dumpty falls. You know, Humpty Dumpty fell, never got okay. Because honestly, I needed him to understand. So let me make sure that we're on the same page. So you're telling me that if I do a Christmas sermon, I'm going to hell. He said, Yeah. I said, Why? Because you're observing and celebrating Christmas. So here's my question. Same question I asked him, the same question I'm going to have you use, which is logic. So I said, did you or did you not do a Mother's Day sermon? I know you did because I seen it on the internet. I know you did a Father's Day sermon. I'm sure you did a Thanksgiving Day sermon, a Memorial Day sermon because you're a fellow soldier. You, you did New Year's Watch. I know you did it because um, somebody told me how good you did on New Year's Watch. So you did a sermon for New Year's. Don't we always do a sermon for Easter too? So I just wanted him to know. I was like, well, what about Black History Month? Do you remember you did a sermon for black history and how to slave? Yeah. I said, now explain to me, what's the difference? That's all I'm trying to get us to understand is we have to be mindful that we're hypocrites by telling people what they can't do, when in essence we're doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Nowhere will you find that any of the disciples, any of the early church ever observed Mother's Day, Father's Day, Thanksgiving Memorial Day, New Year's Easter, any other day you can think of? Mm -hmm. 
there's no religious holidays that they observed. So, but that was the argument he used against me, but you can't do it because the early church didn't use to celebrate Christmas. Well, why are you celebrating all these other days? And the point of this was just to say, sometimes we have to be mindful that when we tell people what we can't do, do you not admit you're missing the point of the season that it really is? So, we have to acknowledge that we've all celebrated Christmas. It's not about telling people Santa Claus is real. Telling them Rudolph can actually talk, has a red nose and lights and stuff. Because people get so one-sided that they miss the big picture. People are going to put whatever they want to about it, but you use a situation to explain Jesus. Matter of fact, the young man that was, um, he was, he got an angel came down and told him, and there was a uh, an Ethiopian eunuch off on the side over there. We ain't the Bible. Ain't bothering nobody. Mm -hmm. He went there to talk to the Ethiopian eunuch. He used that occasion. And what did he say he preached to him? Jesus. So explain to me what the difference is and what day. Does it, matter of fact, this is how I said the poor guy up. And I'm going to just let you know and we'll move on. I, I asked him, well, I actually said, Jesus is the reason for the season. Because Jesus is the reason for every season. Mm -hmm. When we don't understand what a season really is, I said, Do you, brother, how can you not understand that Jesus is the reason for the season? I'll take 2 Timothy 4, chapter verses 1 through 4. 2 Timothy 4, chapter verses 1 through 4. When I went there, I figured he would catch on that I was setting him up, but apparently not, because he goes and gets his phone and pulls it up. We'll read. I charge thee therefore before God. And the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead, and is appearing in the kingdom, preach the word. In, it be instant, in season. Out of season. In season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust they shall heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away from the ears from the truth. And should be turned into fables. So for a moment, we're just going to use something simple. Title, Tis the Season. This Tis the Season. Mm -hmm. Folks will tell you, Jesus ain't the reason for the season. But if we understand what Paul is telling Timothy in verse number 2, he's telling him to use every opportunity to preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. There is an opportunity at any given moment to preach the gospel. Matter of fact, I'm going to bring it on. Mm -hmm. I came, sat in the back, dude over there, came in that little book. I said I was going to bring it to show you how he got his number and stuff. But he used an opportunity to preach Jesus to him. He didn't beat me all upside the head telling me where I was going. You know, from like show left ain't going to hell. But look where I am now. I remember sitting in the back, second row from the back, left hand side behind a choke. Uh, Ooh, whole bunch of them, they need to this. But look why I went from the pew to the pulpit. Yeah. Because I got told Jesus. Mm -hmm. If nothing else, every opportunity is an opportunity to preach Jesus. Because he told them in season and out of season. So first we need to understand, what is this word? He said, preach the word. Mm -hmm. Well, the word, if we look at the word, I'm going to get technical. The word is logos, L-O-G-O-S. Mm -hmm. And it's the Greek word for this word here is logos. It's the same word that we find in John 1 1. Same word we find in John 1 14. Some of us are remember this. In the beginning was the word. That's that logos. Mm -hmm. So wait a minute, I need to be preached the word, preached the logos. Verse number 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and beheld his glory, and is the Lord of the God of the Father, full of grace and truth. So if we ought to preach the word, it means we ought to preach the logos. That means we got to preach Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. And if we're going to preach Jesus, that means in order to preach Jesus, you have to preach his gospel. Right. So when do we preach his gospel, Paul? In season mm -hmm. and out season. Mm -hmm. In season means every Sunday. Mm -hmm. That's what it means for me. He's like, every time you're supposed to preach the gospel, mm -hmm. in every um, um, gospel meeting, every revival, every homecoming, every Sunday, that's in season, when you're supposed to. So, 
you are to preach the gospel when it's scheduled to. But out of season means to uh, minister, to seek opportunities to preach the gospel. In such periods, it might be inconvenient to himself. He was saying, there are going to come times when you're going to need to preach the gospel when it's not really the right time according to society. Mm -hmm. Like when you're at your work and everybody cracking jokes that you know you shouldn't be laughing at. Mm -hmm. And you might have to slide in there and say a few words to the Lord. It's inconvenient because now folks look at you like you want a Jesus freak. Better be called that than some other freak. Mm -hmm. But how many of us are going to actually preach Jesus in the midst of whoever, whenever, and why? Now, this is not a, uh, I had to tell us about before, this is not a call for you to go to the night uh, establishment mm -hmm. and go in there and say, we're going to convert some folks. Who are you for? <laughs> That's not what he's saying. Use an opportunity when it arises to preach Jesus. Right. My best friend, who is now a preacher in the gospel, I preached out of season more than I did in season, and now he's a minister of the gospel. Best friend. But we used to do dirt together too. When I changed, me and the Lord got a relationship, I changed. So now, not only do you preach it by mouth, let your actions be the best sermon that you could ever preach. I can tell him anything, and he looked at me, we live together. I know you can't tell me that you live really. Your lifestyle is the best sermon that you can ever preach. Because hypocrites love to say the right things and do the wrong things. So, Every holiday, you should be able to incorporate the gospel. It doesn't make a difference. If we're talking about the Mori Day soldiers, Jesus was a soldier and he had soldiers. Right. If we're talking about Martin Luther King Day, Jesus was discriminated against too. Notice how it's very easy for us to preach all that stuff. It, uh, Mother's Day, he's a, uh, a one that preaches, was it closer than a brother. But come Christmas, you better not say nothing about Christmas on Christmas. Y'all see the hypocrisy in that? So I need us to understand that on every occasion there's an opportunity to preach Jesus. Now why is that? So this is the question I kind of asked him as I walked away. I said, hey bro, when is it not a good time to preach Jesus? Since you say I can't preach Jesus on Christmas, I can't preach Jesus' name on Christmas at the same time. Even though Christmas, Christ is same. Mm -hmm. When is it not a good time to preach Jesus? Anybody can give me a, a real good idea when is it a time, good time not to preach Jesus? Now, sure, there's no, not one time that is not good to preach Jesus. And we know there is, there is no such thing as not a good time to preach Jesus. And I knew he didn't have an answer. So he's just standing there looking all crazy. I'm like, I tried to warn you. No, I really didn't. That's a lie. I need to repent of that. No, I did try to warn you. But it was like to say, you, first of all, you came into a conversation that wasn't talking to you. I'm trying to help this person. We're just talking. All we did, how we go from fra ra 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 to now I'm having a debate over whether or not I can preach Christ at Christmas. I just didn't understand it, but then I've learned now. That's why I don't argue with people. Because some people are going to be just like, I don't celebrate uh, October. What's the thing in October to, to get the free candy? Halloween. I don't celebrate that, but then you give me some candy. Guess what I mean? <laughs> Easter, I don't celebrate nobody's money. But the day after, the, the basket real cheap ain't. Okay, so that's what I'm talking about. So what I'm saying is, I get, but sometimes we have to be quit being so dogmatic about issues because you turn off people to Christ because of how you are in your super religiousnessness. Tell me who Jesus is. Don't beat me up about that because, believe it or not, this is the season. This is the one season that people are going to remember who Christ is. Now, I'm not advocating that you celebrate Christ, uh, uh, Christ Christmas. Don't, don't I don't put a Christmas tree in my house. Why? Because i got to take it down. <laughs> it's been honest. I don't put up lights. Because I've been a fell off the ladder and broke my neck. There's a whole bunch of stuff I just don't do. They you call me Scrooge. My children are gone. I ain't putting up nothing. i got a Christmas tree thing that sits in my... My, uh, my car smells good. I'll take that up and say Merry Christmas. That's it. <laughs> I'm just never, I'm a Thanksgiving man. Family. That's all it's about is eating and family and fellowship. 
Christmas, they're going to change it just a little bit. Just a little, you know, when you, all you can think of is who you got to buy for, how much you got to spend. And, and society has turned it into a commercial because you got Black Friday, mm -hmm. but most people are being the red on Saturday. Somebody know what I'm talking about. So we got to know that this is the right time of the season to talk about who Jesus is. This season, I know a lot of friends about it, think about turkey, um, the deer season now. Yeah, deer season, yeah. turkey season. Yeah. Right now, I love it because it's basketball season. It's, it, it's also Christmas season. But I might as well call it out. It's roll tie season, too. Y'all see that yesterday? Okay, all right. It's the wood with the roll tie season. I feel sorry for you. But what I'm trying to say is there's a season at any given time you can still be with Jesus. Regardless, don't get so caught up in what you can't do. Use the opportunity as a season. Because we talk about seasons, and we don't even realize that we talk about seasons. In the month of October, it's hurricane season. Uh, what else we got? Um, tornado season. My favorite season, somewhere right around the end of August to like October, November, it's called peanut season. Because the allergies act up. It's not in those. It's sore throats. You come see Callahan and t So everybody has a season and the perfect time to preach. Jesus is in a season. When is there a season that Jesus ain't supposed to be preached in? That's what I'm trying to get us to understand. Make sure we're not dogmatic and telling folk you can't preach Jesus in the Christmas season. Matter of fact, Ecclesiastes, third chapter, verse 1 and following. To everything there is a season and a purpose under heaven. He's letting you know that there's some things that he goes on and talks about things that we do personally, physical things that we do, that's a season for. But in every season, Jesus can be preached. That's what I'm trying to get us to stand. If you don't like Christmas, you don't believe you ought to do Christmas, you don't believe you ought to put up lights, there are certain things you ought to keep to yourself unless they ask you. If they don't ask you, then why are you giving your opinion when they didn't ask you. Because people have get turned off about who Jesus is. Because Jesus didn't talk to people that way. Find an opportunity for what they said to preach to them Jesus. That's all I'm trying to get us to understand. Because right now, there are going to be people who are going to be hurting, as we've been talking about, in this community, starving in this community. This is the perfect time to tell them about somebody that can give them provisions for everything that they need. Right. But you have to know for yourself in order to tell somebody about it. So we have to understand that regardless, we are all sinners and we all have been saved. When I got baptized, there was no sins. There was no particular time frame. But somebody still preached to me, Jesus. So all I'm saying is, notice I keep repeating this thing because I want to see it in your head. There is no better time like the present to preach Jesus. So, Jesus is the reason for every season. If you're going through a season of difficulty, maybe you ought to talk to Jesus. If you're going through a season of a whole bunch of grief, guess who you need to talk to about it? That's everything that we say, but this is your season. It's always your season. But when you're going through something, Jesus has been trying to get your attention for a long time. He's been trying to say, I, I've been, hello, I've been calling you. I've been waiting on you to come back. So whatever season that you're going through, whether it's bad season, financial season, uh, all those other seasons you hear on the TV, <laughs> ask yourself, what's your relationship with life with Christ? When was the last time that you talked to him other than when you needed something? Because when people realize that you're going through some things, and they see you start changing through those seasons. They're going to come ask you, why are you smiling in the midst of the storm that I see you in? You can tell them, Jesus is the reason for the season. Because once I realize I got to go through this, in order for him to get me over here, I become stronger now. So when I get to there, when that little bit of weight get on me, it's nothing. So, let me make it clear. 
If you can't bench press 50 pounds, you start a little bit. You start at about 20, I hope. And after a while, let's say a couple of months later, somebody gave you 50 pounds. It's easy. A little bit later on down the line, you don't realize something can happen and something you may need to lift something. I always make this joke. You need to lift something and all of a sudden you realize you ain't got the, how do I get the strength to do this? Because of what you've already been through, you are now able to, to carry whatever the problem is that's getting ready to come. So God allows us to go through some things. As Joseph, about if Joseph had not went through all that stuff he went through, he would have never been prepared where God needed to put him at being second in command. So there's a season that he had to go through, and he went through a depression season, in case you didn't know. Where he said, what have I done? Why am I in jail? I don't deserve to be here. I've helped everybody. Look where I'm at. He wasn't ready for what God had for him. But once he got out, guess what? He was prepared, and he was ready for what God had for him, but he had to go through a season. So today, when we go through our season, understand that Jesus is the reason for the season. And if we understand the one thing about Christmas that everybody's already put out there is that Christmas is about gifts. Christmas is about how pretty you wrap it. Because you can wrap up a pretty box with nothing in it. Oh, okay, I'm the only person that did that. Okay. So my, so my tree will look good. And that's how I realized I'm putting up a tree for nothing. Stop putting up a tree and you ain't got to put nothing up under. But I would wrap up nothing. But it looked good under there. Thank goodness we have faith. You're not going to take pictures. <laughs> Ain't nothing in it, but it looks good. Well, that's a shame, but you know I'm telling the truth. It's about people have changed Christmas into about getting gifts. And the truth be told, and, and, and honestly, it's more about you know, receiving gifts rather than giving the gifts. Is it Acts 20 and 35? Where uh, it's recorded that uh, it says that Jesus said it's more blessed to give than to receive. So Jesus being who he is, knowing this particular statement, he would have had to learn that from somewhere. Children don't, children learn how to be selfish by looking at who they learn how to be selfish from. Children learn how to be giving by who they see giving a lot. Therefore, Jesus would have had to have known that God is a God that loves giving. God is in, well, I've heard somebody say, God is in the giving business. Uh -huh. And if so, we can start from the beginning. God gave Adam and Eve a piece of skin to cover them in their sins. Mm -hmm. God gave Noah plans to an ark to save him and the rest of his family. Mm -hmm. Sarah was a whole bunch whole. He gave a, a child. He gave Israelites something that they didn't deserve. A land of milk and honey. If you miss Sunday school, you can also bring it up. Mm -hmm. You miss the Sunday school, you miss the South because the pond be getting on it. But he gave some of them under a certain age the land of milk and honey. Mm -hmm. Some of them walked around for 40 years and never they saw it, never got there. But God still gave them something that they didn't even work for or that they didn't even deserve. Mm -hmm. God can give you the same things that you don't deserve, but he still gives it to you anyway. We call it grace and mercy. God loves to give. Matter of fact, let's go, let's go Christmas. God gave the shepherds an announcement by the angels that, that Christ was born. Then he told them, wise men, I'm going to give you a star for you to follow to get to where he's born. And last but not least, most important, Jesus gave his life that we might be saved. Mm -hmm. What is the greatest gift that is that is to give your life for your fellow brother and sister Christ? So my point is, Jesus didn't stop about just saying something. He was about, he was about what he said, he was already about doing it. So my thing is, this Christmas, don't get so caught up in what you're gonna give. If you can't give nothing but encouraging words, give it. Stop being so caught up in what I didn't get nothing. Because when you look under that thing and you didn't give what you want, your children looking at you, you're like, I, didn't, I wanted some love boots. You gave me some love boots. <laughs> you wanted some Jordan, but you got some, some Jacksons. You know, the point is, people complain, <clears throat> and our children are watching us, right. and they're imitating what we do. Instead of them hearing, thank you, Jesus, 
They hear it. You got your seat so I can take this back? <laughs> okay, I'm on one. I heard that. Okay. <laughs> we have to remember the goodness of God. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. James, first chapter, verse number 17. John tells us that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Who shall believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. When Jesus was at uh, the woman at the well, he said, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who that is said to thee, Give me the drink, you would have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Jesus was always talking about letting me know, i got a gift for you. And the gift, the most greatest gift we have is Jesus. Remember, Jesus is the greatest gift that you can give. Man, stop worrying about the materialistic thing because those materialistic things, are they going to perish sooner or later? And push comes shove, we're going to die. And I hate using the word, but you can't take it with you. Are you leaving your legacy as one of the child of God? Or are you leaving your legacy and stuff you left your children? If you leave your children a good name, or are you leaving them some money that they can fight over? That means I need to move on because that's somebody missed out. The point is, people don't have to wait to Christmas to receive the best gift they could ever have. And that's Jesus. That's what I'm saying here. So if you know someone that doesn't know Christ, why are you not giving them Jesus? Help somebody understand, because it's the perfect reason to say, you see them people that got the little activity scene there with the, the baby and all that stuff, all that stuff? No, that's not should be the focus. No. But just like the, the, um, the Ethiopian eunuch, start where they are and preach to them Jesus. People want to be saved. They just don't know how to be saved. Or some don't realize that the way they think they're going to be saved ain't really the way they're going to be saved. So you have to be the one to tell them the truth. So seize every opportunity, every moment that you can to preach to somebody Jesus. Because someone took the time out and the opportunity to preach to you, Jesus. Christmas falls on a Sunday this year. I'm glad no one asked me how we have a church on Sunday. That's something wrong with that. Because people ask, are y'all having church on Sunday? I'm telling you, someone asked me, and I'm like, well, if Jesus is the reason for the season, why would you not want to? I just, it dumbfounds me. Because we talk about Jesus, Jesus is the reason, but you question whether or not you have church on Sunday because. His birthday is on Sunday. Did y'all see how just that just don't make sense? But somebody, somewhere ain't going. Oh, this Jesus' birthday ain't going to church today. But I bet they go to work. All right, then. Okay, all right. So somebody understands. So this is the season. That's what I'm saying. This is the season. Use the opportunity. Tell somebody about Christ. Remember that somebody somewhere don't know him. And if they don't know him, why don't they know him? On the day of judgment, when they be singing that song, you never mentioned him to me. Because God's going to give you an opportunity to look back on the people that you had the opportunity to talk to them about Christ. If this is the season, and the person's not a child of God, we can let them know this is the greatest gift they could have gotten. The greatest gift that they can give, and God the God that continues to give. So what do they need to do? Believe that Jesus Christ actually came from heaven. He actually left the glory of God to come down here. Walk among people that he knew later on was going to betray him. Actually, allow men to capture him, crucify him, put up on the cross, die, and rose, rise again on the third day according to the scriptures. Do they believe that? If they can believe that, then they got to do something about their life. And that is to confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, repent of their sins, go to the water of baptism, where God adds you to the church, and no one can take you out of the church but you. God ain't trying to take you out. The only person that can remove you from the Lord is you. God never moves you. You move away from God. And if you're a child of God, you haven't been living right for God, and you haven't been the child that's been preaching Jesus at every opportunity, now is the opportunity you may do so. Together we sing a verse of our invitational song. Have you been to Jesus for the 